Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to draw myself into different video game styles. This is video number 7 in the series. This is one of my favorite series because I always find it super fun to try to draw in different video game styles. This first game no one requested, but it is one of my childhood favorites that I randomly remembered about, and it is Cooking Mama. If you've never heard of Cookie Mama, let me educate you. <laughs> it is basically a cooking simulator game where you play tons of mini games to cook a dish of your choosing. The one I played most as a kid was Cookie Mama Cook Off for the Wii, and I would play it so much. I will talk more about the game in a bit, but for now let's talk a little about the art style. The Wii version of the game had a lot of 3D elements, but you would often see 2D art of Mama doing different emotions, kind of based on how you performed in the mini games. The style is very chibi like, but also kind of not chibi like like at the same time. The characters' heads are very large and the head to body ratio is basically equal. Right now I'm kind of just getting a feel for the proportions as well as how I want to stylize myself. Oh also here's a picture of myself if you don't know what I look like. Sometimes I forget to include a picture of myself but I'm making sure to do that this time. <laughs> Mama has an apron and she wears a bandana or a kerchief on her head. So for my character, I thought I should style my clothes in a similar way, but with different colors. If you don't know, I'm a big fan of the color teal, so that's why I'm going to be using it a lot in these designs. Now that I have an idea for how I want to style myself, I'm trying to come up with a more interesting pose than me just standing there. <laughs> for the first idea, I was thinking I could maybe be holding some kind of messed up cake while having my body turned away from the viewer a bit. Being that Cookie Mama is a game about cooking cooking and I'm not a very good cook in real life, I thought it might be funny to kind of express my lack of cooking skill in the illustration, hence why the cake is messy. I liked the idea but I wanted to see if I could think of something I like more. And for the pose at first, I didn't really know where I was going with it. At first I wanted one arm to be going up and behind my head and maybe I'd be holding a spatula in my other hand. I felt like the arm that is going up would look kind of funny because of the proportions. Plus I wanted to show some messed up food in the illustration like I mentioned. So I moved the spatula to my other hand and I'll be holding some burnt food with the other. I overall really liked this idea so I started to flesh it out more. One thing I noticed as I was working on this is that the characters do not have eyebrows and their eyelids kind of function as eyebrows. Whenever styles don't have eyebrows, I always really, really, really want to add them. <laughs> but I'm going to stay true and not add them. I tried my best to express my emotion through my eyes instead since there's no eyebrows. Also, for the food, I was thinking of drawing actual food and just making it look burnt or messed up. But I thought it'd be more simple and funnier to make it just be a burnt pile of ash. <laughs> So I have done a good amount of baking in real life in the past, but it's always really simple stuff like boxed cake mix or cookie mix. And I always feel like those things don't really count. I did make tacos one time for a HelloFresh promotion and that did go a lot more smoothly than I was expecting. But I was also kind of panicking basically the whole time and asking my brother what the instructions were. <laughs> so yeah, my cooking skills are something I kind of want to work on especially since I'll be moving out of my family's home later this year since I'll be married. Uh, but as you can see, I'm working on the line art. The line art is on the thicker side with a good amount in line variation. The lines along the outside edges are thicker, whereas the lines on the inside are thinner. And for this, I actually had to make a new version of my line art brush. My usual brush that I use has a texture to it. And this isn't good in this case since Cookie Mama's line art is smooth. Now I could have just used a different brush that had a smooth texture, but the thing is, is that I really like how my usual brush reacts to changes in pressure. It's really easy to get different line widths and I needed that for this art. So I made a duplicate of my usual brush, went into the settings and set it to the texture of a different brush. And ta-da, I have my usual brush with a smooth texture. Ever since I switched to the AA ink brush, I have a really hard time using anything else for some reason. <laughs> Like I mentioned, I played Cookie Mama so much as a kid and I haven't thought about it in a really long time, but for some reason when I thought about doing another video game style video, this game instantly popped into my head and I was like, oh yeah, I need to do that. <laughs> I hope this video reaches other Cooking Mama fans. <laughs> as a kid, I actually did all the recipes in Cookie Mama Cook Off and got gold medals on all of them. I also took pride in the fact that I had the perfect motion technique for cracking the eggs. That was kind of the fun part about the Wii version is that you had to do motions for a lot of the different actions. But also the kind of frustrating part when it didn't want to work right. My brother and I would always do the versus mode and he would get so mad when the controls didn't want to work properly. We would have a lot of fun overall. Now I really want to play Cookie Mama, that sounds like fun. 
The coloring for this was pretty simple. I just had to fill in the base colors and add some cell shading and highlights. Simple styles are often pretty fast for me to get done, but sometimes they are a bit tricky to work with. With simple styles, it can feel like you need to be more exact with your proportions, or you need to mimic things more accurately because you can't hide behind details. For this, I often found myself kind of nudging and adjusting things to help it fit with the style more. Also, I imagine if I was a character in Cookie Mama, I would be a bonus mini game where you have to keep me from messing things up or you have to fix my mistakes. <laughs> so here's me in the style of Cookie Mama. Working on this made me very nostalgic and now I want to go get the Wii out and play some Cookie Mama. Oh, also I didn't draw the background for this little character show off thing. It's a background I found when I was looking at Cookie Mama promo art and I kind of edited it into this little scene here. I thought it was kind of cute. Unlike Cookie Mama, this next game was highly requested by many of you, and it is Amori. But before we jump into that, I want to thank Vogue Race for sponsoring this video. Vogue Race is a professional product manufacturer and supplier. I've worked with Vogue Race multiple times, and I always love the products they make. They specialize in custom-made keychains, badges, pins, stickers, standees, tote bags, and washi tape, and so much more. My favorite part is that Vogue Race offers low quantity amounts. You can order products without needing to order tons of stock. And here are some of the products that I made with Vogue Race. First look at this super cute lanyard. It features an acrylic charm of my OC Doris and the pattern has a design featuring the main crew of my webcomic. I'm really happy with the print quality on the fabric. It looks really nice. Next is a super unique wooden standee. I've only ever seen acrylic standees and I think the colors really pop on the wood. It's really cool and unique. This vinyl sticker sheet also features my characters and I'm super happy with how the colors turned out and the quality. The lines are super crisp. Speaking of stickers, check out this sticker book. It has a protective cover to protect the design and on the inside the paper is a special kind of paper that is made of the same thing that sticker backings are made out of. So you can place your stickers to save for later and once you want to use them you can remove them with ease. It's super cool. And it's really neat having it feature my art. This item is one of my personal favorites. It's a shaker charm. Inside the charm we have little acrylic pieces of my chibi characters. I do have to say I was expecting the pieces to be a bit larger, but with the extra space you can put in items like glitter or beads. And we have even more items like this really neat epoxy sticker, double-sided business card, holographic standee, and I actually made it the correct size this time. <laughs> Last time I accidentally made them super tiny. I love the colors the acrylic makes, it's super cool. And we also have this tote bag. Once again, I'm so happy with the print quality. The bag is double-sided and I think the design turned out so good on it. I'm actually going to be doing a giveaway of these items. One lucky winner will receive one of each item I featured here. To enter, check out the link in the description and head over to Rafflecopter. Use an email to sign in. Click on the enter here option and press enter. You can also follow me or Vogue Race on our social media sites for extra entries, but it's not required. Thank you so much again to Vogue Race for sponsoring this video and for sending me all of these lovely products. Now let's get back into drawing. Like I said, Omori was highly requested, but it's actually a game I've never played before. Because all of you kept recommending it to me, I thought about playing it, but then I saw it was rated M mostly because it deals with really heavy topics and is referred to as a psychological horror game. And so I thought that maybe it wasn't really for me. However, I did check out some let's play of the early parts of the games and it does look very charming. According to my search, Omori is a role playing video game. The player controls a teenage boy named Sunny and his dream world alter ego, Omori. The player explores both the real world and Sunny's surreal dream world as Omori, either overcoming or suppressing his fears and forgotten secrets. I usually don't draw myself into games that I haven't played myself, but the art style is so charming and cute that I really wanted to give it a try. The game seems to have illustrations in it, and the ones I saw were all really cute. Uh, plus the sprite work is adorable. Like I mentioned, there is the real world and the dream world, and the art style kind of changes in the way it is rendered depending on where you are, it seems. I really liked the feel of the dream world style, so I'm going to render my drawing in that way. It looked the most intriguing to try out to me, and I love the use of texture. For my pose, I decided to draw myself in a kind of nervous looking stance. I went with this because a lot of Amori seems to focus around mental health, and something I've often dealt with when it comes to my mental health is anxiety. A kind of random detail I included is me pinching my thigh. I haven't had to do it recently, but when I used to get really nervous, I would sometimes pinch my thigh or my hand and focus on the pain of the pinching to distract myself. I would especially do this at the dentist or at like appointments. 
Sometimes I'd be pinching myself for so long that my thigh would really hurt afterwards. <laughs> Overall, I felt like it was pretty easy to adapt to the style of Amori, since it is a manga-like style. It's very much down my alley, and there are some parts of it I would like to try to include in my alternate styles, if I get the chance to, like my auntie style or my chibi elf style. One part of the style I really liked is the sketchy texture of the darker filled areas, like shadows or dark hair. I really like the feeling of it and how it looks. It was also really fun to do, I could kind of just let my pen go super crazy and scribble all over the place. Also, I'm using the right borrow pen set to a slightly lower opacity and multiply. That way, it kind of behaves as a pen and I could build up the color a bit. I feel like I didn't perfectly replicate the texture you see in the game, but it was still really fun to do. One thing I did struggle with was the more wobbly line art, and this may sound kind of funny because shouldn't it be easier to make line art more wobbly? A lot of times the hard part is making it not wobbly. <laughs> But that's kind of why I struggle. The perfectionist in me wants to make it neat and smooth, but I need to be more carefree and let it be a little bit more organic. I still feel like I could have been a bit more loose with my lines, but I tried. A lot of times while working on the art for games, I'll talk about how I feel like I would fit into the game as a character or what my role would be. But since I haven't played this game, I'm not sure how I would fit into it. I would probably just be some kind of side NPC or something. And as I was working on this piece, it did get me thinking about my anxiety and how my relationship with it has changed. Honestly, I find it kind of crazy how much it has changed in a year. Past me was so scared at the idea of doing simple things like going out to eat, going to church, making phone calls, family gatherings. And over the past year, I've gotten less scared. And it got me thinking as to what's caused this change. And it might sound funny, but I think falling in love did, or the process of falling in love did. For me and my fiance to get to where we are now, we had to do a lot of hard things. I had to start talking to a stranger I met on a dating site, meet him in person and do activities for dates. We had to have hard conversations that required me to be very open and honest. I had to go to a different state to meet his family. And overall, the process of falling in love is just kind of scary. But because I did all those things, doing simple stuff like going to church or out to eat feels not nearly as scary as it used to. And of course, this was all a slow process that happened over time. I didn't just wake up one day anxiety free. And I'm not saying I am totally free from it now. It's a normal human emotion to have. It just used to happen too easily and too often. But it has much less of a hold on me now than it used to and I'm really thankful for that. Well, I feel like things got kind of deep there, but that's where my brain was when I was working on this. <laughs> Anyways, for the finishing details, I tried to add more texture by applying some noise. I also added some chromatic abrasion by using an auto action I found on the CSP asset library. Chromatic abrasion is basically you take green, red, and blue and kind of move them around to give a kind of retro look. It's a really neat effect and I kept feeling like the art in Amori kind of had it, but I couldn't totally tell. But I decided to add it anyway because I do feel like it looks kind of cool. If you want to know more about chromatic abrasion, I recommend looking up some tutorials on it. It's a really neat effect. So here's me in the style of Amori. I haven't played the game, but I still had a lot of fun drawing in the style. Like I said, it's super charming and very cute. Maybe I'll give the game a try someday. How creepy is it to all of you who have played it? Undertale was a bit creepy, but I could handle it. But it was also only rated E10. <laughs> Last but not least, I'm going to draw myself in the style of Kingdom Hearts. The other two styles I did for this video were fairly simple, so I wanted to try doing a more detailed style. And the characters for Kingdom Hearts are very detailed. In case you have never heard of Kingdom Hearts, it is a game created by Square Enix and Disney. Basically, you be characters that look like they are from Final Fantasy and go to different Disney worlds. And you're trying to save worlds from the evil Disney villains and the Heartless. I was a bit nervous to work on this design because the art style for Kingdom Hearts is so pretty and detailed. I found as many references as I could to try to help me out. For this first draft, I was mostly referencing a 3D model from the game, but this was making things feel not very true to the art you see on things like the cover or for promotional purposes, so I tried to start referencing the art more when doing the cleanup sketch. So I actually did draw myself in the style of Kingdom Hearts a few years back, but it was only a headshot. 
Plus it is older art and I feel like I can do better now than I did before. I do have to say it is still really tricky to find references for the female characters in the game. I could kind of only find lower res pictures to go off of and they can be a little hard to study. One part that was tricky is that the art style is pretty consistent but it also changes a lot depending on which game the art was made for or what illustration it's from. Sometimes the art is more textured and soft feeling, sometimes it's sharper and clean. I had to try to decide which way I wanted to go with the art or find common denominators. I had to find things that were common between each of the pieces that I saw. I decided to mostly reference art from Kingdom Hearts 2 because I really like the way things are rendered for it. But I did have a wide range of pictures from other games to help me figure out how to draw different areas. One thing I did find to be very consistent was the line weight. The artwork often uses different textures for line art depending on the piece, but the way the line weight flows in each piece felt very similar. It has a variety of thicker and thinner lines and seems to often get thicker where objects bump out. And I found this to be interesting because I tend to make parts that bump out be thinner for the line width. So it was kind of the opposite of what I usually do. This piece overall took me by far the longest. Cookie Mama took me about an hour and a half. Omori took me a little over an hour. And this one took me about three and a half hours. But like I said, it's much more detailed. It also has a more semi-realistic style. And I always find this to be more time consuming. The characters' faces are kind of more realistically proportioned and so are their bodies. Overall, the body was about seven heads in length, um, which is kind of similar to what I usually do. I kind of do a combination of like six to seven heads, kind of depending on what I'm drawing. But even so, the proportions were kind of different from my usual. One thing I was trying to remember is the larger feet and hands, and I kept kind of forgetting about it, especially in the sketching process. I tried to size them up to be larger than how I usually draw them, but I'm not sure if I did it enough. Kingdom Hearts has kind of scaled down the proportions over the years though, so it's probably okay. The hands and feet were super big in Kingdom Hearts 1, and it seems kind of like as the games have gone on, they've gotten a bit smaller over time. For my outfit, I went with a button-up sweater, a shirt with a collar and tie, plaid skirt, thigh-high socks, and loafers. I wanted something that felt a bit more anime or Kingdom Hearts-like, but also still kind of felt like me. I wasn't sure if I should go with outfits more like Sora or Riku, because their outfits feel very Kingdom Hearts. But I decided to go with things more like Kyrie and Aerith. Is that how you say her name? I don't remember how to say her name. It's been a really long time since I played Kingdom Hearts 1. For a little while, I was wondering if I wanted to make myself be a nobody, but then I started looking into the lore of nobodies and it was starting to hurt my brain. Basically, nobodies are kind of like mirrored versions of like characters, if that makes any sense. I don't know how to explain it, but the lore for Kingdom Hearts and its story all gets so complicated and it's hard for me to keep up with. I've played some of the games and I do want to get into the series more, but the complicatedness of the story kind of deters me a bit. And I haven't heard the greatest of things about Kingdom Hearts 3, but I haven't tried it for myself. But the fact that I hear a lot of fans weren't super happy with it kind of doesn't motivate me to play it. But I always really like the characters in Kingdom Hearts and the concept of the series. It's really neat. I was also super hyped when Sora was announced as DLC for Smash Bros. That was so cool. I was like, what? They're adding Sora to Smash Bros? Like, I didn't think it actually happened, but it did. <laughs> like I mentioned, for the coloring, I was using illustrations from Kingdom Hearts 2 as my reference. It uses very warm sunset-like colors for the illustrations. I found the rendering to be the hardest thing to try to duplicate myself, and I tried my best, but I feel like I could have gotten closer. The shading has a mixture of hard edges, but the shadows also get kind of blended out and you can kind of see and feel the strokes in the game art. But at the same time, it can feel very simple, but then other times it can feel very detailed. Just like for other parts, things kind of change depending on what game it was made for or when it was made. So once again, I was trying to find things that felt sort of consistent between the pieces. One thing I did learn while working on this is that maybe I should try using multiply less for my illustrations. When I was shading the skin, I didn't set the shading color to multiply because I wanted it to match the color I selected from the original art. And this made it so the way I worked was a bit different and I was able to add more bright colors that really popped and they didn't get super dark because they were set to a normal blending mode. And as I was working on this picture, I would set layers to multiply, but then found that I didn't like how some of the colors behaved when on the multiply layer. So I'd have to make a new one that was set to a normal blending mode. 
Sorry if this is all confusing. <laughs> but yeah, long story short, I may want to try to rely on multiply not as much for my shading because I find that some of the colors pop a lot more if I don't set them to multiply. I don't feel like this illustration turned out perfectly, but it was still super fun to try to draw in a style similar to Kingdom Hearts. And I do feel like it turned out better than the old one did a few years back. Oh, also I decided to add this little diamond pattern to my socks. I thought it was kind of a fun detail. I was trying to make my clothes feel more detailed in some kind of way. <laughs> so here are all the pictures I drew. If you want to learn new techniques or ways of doing things, I highly recommend trying something like this. Trying to mimic other art styles can teach you a ton and help you find new ways of doing things that you maybe wouldn't have tried out yourself. And I hope you like how all of these turned out. I had a lot of fun drawing myself into Cooking Mama, Omori, and Kingdom Hearts. Before we end, I want to say a super big thank you to my wonderful YouTube members and Patreon patrons. Your support means a ton to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!